Hi guys, it's Carol from Cape Cod Cottage Garden. And today in the garden, I'm gonna plant most of my seedlings. We are in zone 7B on Cape Cod Mass. And as far as the farmer's almanac goes, my last frost date was April 25th. Now I would never plant this stuff out in April, but it is now May 19th and the 10 day forecast looks pretty good. And my plants are really starting to suffer from being in these pots. For example, look at my tomatoes. They're not looking so hot. Oops. They're getting leggy. They're getting all this dead foliage at the bottom. They got to get out of these pots. So let's see how much we can get done. So come along. You can see over there, Mr. Hubby is working on the entrance to our secret garden. This is a project we're going to be doing bit by bit. My whole garden is in process. I started from a blank slate. This is my third season, the start of my third season. So I think we've accomplished a lot in two years. So everything we do is do a little bit at a time. And yesterday, my, Mr. Hubby put up this garden arbor. That's going to be the entrance to the secret garden. So, but the first plant, Mr. Hubby's digging the hole. Um, we're going to be putting in today. I'll show you right now. So we had one of these plants, not this variety, in our old house. And Mr. Hubby loves it. So this is his kind of pet project. That's one of the reasons why he's digging the hole. And two, my back is still healing. So I can't really dig the big holes yet. So this is a Harlequin Honeysuckle. It is a gorgeous plant. You can see there's buds all over it. Isn't it lovely? It has this variegated leaf with this cream border. Very, very pretty. And there's some pinky red in it too. Isn't that nice? Let me tell you a few facts about this shrub. It's first and foremost, I always make sure it's non-invasive. So this is a non-invasive type of honeysuckle. It has a very strong fragrance. It says, especially at night. I never knew that. I don't know if that's true of all honeysuckles or this one in particular. It grows 10 to 12 feet high and three to six feet wide. So it is quite vigorous. It's deer, pest and disease resistant. It takes full sun, part shade. It's hardy in zones four through nine. And it does a big flush of blooms in late spring, as you can see, it's loaded right now. And then it continues blooming sporadically throughout the summer. And I think it has these creamy, purpley, pink flowers. It sounds really, really pretty. And obviously because it's a honeysuckle and it has the tubular-like flowers, the hummingbirds will just adore this. So we're gonna get this in the ground. So while Mr. Hubby is preparing the hole, I'm gonna fill my bucket with water and soak the whole plant. I always do this when planting new plants. It's the one opportunity you get to make sure the root nicely watered. So just put it in the bucket, it will kind of bubble so you'll know it's getting in there and just let it sit for a little while while you're preparing the hole. So we made a very, very big hole, but we already filled it in, unfortunately. I forgot to film it. And we're mixing in some planting mix, some really nice planting mix. Incorporating with a little bit of our native soil, which is mostly sand. We'll throw in a couple of handfuls of our biotone and plant it up. Now go this way. Perfect. Oh, that was nice. Yay. So here's the entrance to the secret garden. We just planted the Harlequin honeysuckle. And we have to move these two plants. These two plants are perennials that I pulled out of my neighbor's yard. It's some kind of daisy. And this is like a hardy geranium with some kind of, I don't know what it is, spiky purple flower. I don't even know what it is. So we have to remove those two plants. Right here, our Echinacea purpurea that I started from seed last year. So this year, I'm hoping to get some blooms out of them. There's three plants there. I'm gonna keep those there. The path is gonna go this way. So we have to move these. Hopefully we'll do that today. As you can see, so many of my plants are way, way, way smaller this year because I didn't have pots to up-pot them. I won't make that mistake next year. So here are the tomatoes I'm planting. I'm planting 11. They look a little sad. They really need to get in the ground. It's a bit early, but I got to do it. I have Granadero, which is a paste tomato. San Marzano, which is a paste tomato. Costaludo Genovese, which is like a highly fluid Italian, mm, my favorite. Sun Gold. Another Constoluto Genovese. I have a pink Berkeley tie-dye tomato. A beefsteak. Another Constoluto Genovese. 
a sun gold and then I'm gonna plant another bee stake, the tiny, and another pink Berkeley. I never even took them out of the six packs. <laughs> I don't know how they'll do, but I'm gonna give it a try. So I'm gonna put those in the ground now. So I have my tomato plants soaking in a bucket of water. And it's simple enough, I'm just gonna dig a hole. Now I already did soil tests on these beds and they came back really good. All they really needed was nitrogen. So when I was preparing my beds, I topped everything off with some blood meal. So I'm gonna put like a little bit of garden tone in the hole, but not a lot. I'm not gonna show you every one I plant. Uh, let's see. This is my sad little granaderos. Granaderos didn't do great for me last year either. Can't see my head. So I went ahead and I took off all the lower leaves and I'm gonna bury this baby right up to here. I think I talked about this in prior videos, but maybe I can show you. If you can see on the tomato plant itself, on the stem, there's all those little fine hairs. So you can bury this deep and all those little fine hairs will become new roots and give a lot of nutrition to the plant. So I always pull off all the bottom leaves and bury it pretty deep, like up to here. That'd be my beautiful, my nails look. So I'm gonna put this one in. This is, this is a plum tomato or a sauce tomato. Didn't do great for me last year, but I had the seeds, so I figured I'd try it again. Root system is decent. It's not root bound or anything. Put a little garden tone in, just a tiny bit, because I don't want to over amend. And put it in the ground. Here we go. Again. Oh, shoot. I <laughs> didn't plant it deep. Oh, Carol. Oh, Carol. I just got through saying I was going to plant it deep. What is my issue? My issue is that the weather here on Cape Cod is atrocious. It's 52 degrees. It's like drizzling. It's just been awful. The coldest spring that I can remember. There we go. Nice and deep. That's all it takes. I'm going to do some more. Brown-headed cowbird. That's the male. And the female was just there. Where'd she go? Oh, well, that's the male, you can see. They're parasitic nesters. They lay their egg in the nest of another bird. And that other bird raises their family for them. You see that the head is like brown and the rest of the body's black. The female was just here. Just thought I'd share that little fact. It's not really showing well because it's not sunny out. Okay, I found the female, but she's far away. Let's see if I can zoom in. There she is. That's the female. So I got mostly everything planted in. One thing I wanted to mention about the tomatoes I didn't do yet is when you're planting your new tomatoes and they already have buds on them, it's a good idea to pinch those off. I know it seems counterintuitive to pinch them off because that's where the fruit would develop, but you want the tomato to work on establishing a nice root system for the next couple of weeks. There's plenty of time for it to set fruit. So like even on this one, I'm gonna take this whole stem right off. Get rid of it. So it doesn't have to stress. There's another one. Take that off. And that's about, oh, there's one down here. Sorry for the shaky camera work. I'm just kind of hand holding my camera there we go okay just a little hint it's the next day um, I worked yesterday like seriously like 10 hours in this garden I did a whole bunch of stuff so um, I still have a few more things to do here and clean up but I wanted to show you the ranunculus it's looking lovely Isn't that pretty and what I planted yesterday was I got in all my peppers, my pathetic small peppers. <laughs> Look how tiny they are. Last year, my peppers were literally a foot high when I planted them, and these are about three inches, but hopefully they'll catch up. So I have four cayenne long right there. I have California Wonder right there, King of the North right there, and Violet Sparkle. That's like a little purple 
munching pepper and some basil in my tomatoes I have a granadero which is a paste a San Marzano which is another paste Constoluto Genovese right there which is the very highly fluid um, Italian hair heirloom tomato a sun gold down here I have a Kilimanjaro white marigold now the Constoluto Genovese a pink Berkeley tie-dye tomato beef steak another Constoluto Genovese can you tell what my favorite is this tiny little pink Berkeley tie-dye and this tiny little beef steak everything is so small and one more sun gold and then in front of that I have another marigold but that's a mission giant yellow I have some daytail peppers I only planted a, maybe one of those because I don't really like hot 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 peppers and those are supposed to be crazy hot that was a free seed from I think Baker's Creek and I have some jalapenos which look like they could use a little hit with fertilizer because they're looking a little yellow my hard neck, uh, my soft neck garlic, my broccoli I had planted before. I believe that's a calendula that's self-seeded. It's coming back. I planted some chamomile here. It's starting to bud up. Um, what else did I plant yesterday? Oh, over here, I planted some Rosa Bianca eggplant. A Love Lies Bleeding Amaranth. And the last thing I planted was some Utah Tall Celery. The potatoes are coming up. I planted those earlier. And I also up-potted all of these starts from my daughter and my cousin to choose from. I have all kinds of things over here. They're not looking that great because I had them in these little tiny six packs like that. So I spent the time and I up potted all of these. Let me show you what I have in my cut flower garden. Oh, look at my lettuce. Let's take a look while we're here, right? Onions are doing great. I might feed them soon. Lettuce is looking pretty nice, guys. We gotta eat some of this and some tatsoi. Peas looking good. Starting to really put on some growth now. And the volunteer sunflower over there. One other thing we did yesterday. Ta-da! I planted the other James Galway rose that I had in a pot on the other side of my arbor. I didn't know where to put it. I was originally gonna put this on my arbor over there where my new fence is gonna go but my landscaper still hasn't put it in, so I wanted to get it out of the pot. So that's a James Galway, David Austin Rose. On this side, I have the generous gardener, David Austin Rose. This one I planted last year. So look how big this one has gotten in one year. And I even pruned it back. And this was, I got bare root. So you can see how much they can grow in one year. And we also did this. This is gonna be my little secret garden. We put up this arbor. I'll just give you a quick peek. We planted this Harlequin honeysuckle. We're gonna fix these stepping stones. These are just temporary, but the path is gonna come like this. You're gonna be able to go that way to get to the compost bin and this way to go to the little seating. And I transplanted two peonies, some Siberian iris, and I don't know what that perennial is over there. It's like a purple spiky flower. I got it from my neighbor's yard, and that's the other one next to it is some kind of daisy. Got some foxgloves coming up. I have butterfly weed coming up. My, I think it's called cherry chocolata hardy hibiscus is starting to come up you can see the little growth coming up that's a really late emerger so let me just show you what I wanted to accomplish today I cut flower beds I have all these flowers to put in not to mention dahlias I have some dahlias that I started from seed from Florette farm right there all kinds of um, 
I have all kinds of flowers in here. And then look at, we did two more big boxes. So I have to go get more soil to fill these. Okay guys, that's gonna do it for today. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me while I planted up some of my vegetable garden and also gave you a little peek at my new project, The Secret Garden. I'm really excited about that project. I just love how that weeping beach is framed by the arbor. It kind of like blocks what's happening so you can't really see beyond what's going on. So it kind of entices you to come on and take a look at what's behind there. So I'm really looking forward to that project. I thought we got a lot done on it today. So everything's a process. So next up, I think I'm gonna probably plant up my cut flower garden. I have to go out and get tons more soil because Mr. Hobby made me those nice big beds. So I have so many dahlia tubers to plant. And also I have some dahlias that I grew from seed, not to mention all my other cut flowers that I plan on planting up. So I know this video was a little bit here and there, but I will put up some links to link you to other videos that are related to the content. And if you're liking the content, I'd love it if you'd give me a thumbs up and a subscribe, that would be awesome. And until next time, get out there and grow, everybody. Bye.